sir i will i'll tell you when to show your screen after i'll give your interview. hello guys i hope you all are doing great and staying safe and fine i hope everything is groovy at your end today we have molly dharan sir with us to talk about developing azure monitor dashboard with kql using kql and he uh, let me give a little bit introduction about our speaker he is for platform specialist worked as a senior software engineer and he's a multi faith personality having expertise in power platform and all so he'll be taking the session now so over to you sir thank you so let me share my screen i hope you are able to, everyone is able to see my screen yes sir it's visible yes yes thank you so today we are going to talk about uh, developing an azure dashboards using the azure monitor services and the kql services so let's get started so my name is muralidharan dina dayalan so i am working as associate director in the company called quanticate so here we use a power platform as well as the sharepoint online as our main um, applications development so i have my connecti connect social media links like uh, my blogs git as well as twitter and linkedin as well so today agenda so we'll see what is the azure monitoring services and how it works and how we can configure the data sources with the azure monitoring services and the next stone is the what is the kql custom query language and how to write the queries then we will be creating visualizations using the kql and finally we will use these visualizations into the azure dashboards so this is the agenda for this today's session so let me go to the next slide so what is azure monitor services so the azure monitor services is nothing but it monitors the performance and availability for applications as well as the given services so it can be this application can be run on the on premises or on the azure uh, environments as well the same way for the services as well the services can run either on the on premises or on the azure stack so basically it collects all the uh, data and it creates the alerts whenever an, a particular event is occurred and it triggers the event for the users as well or the administrators so it helps to proactively identify the issues and if there is any dependent failures resource or failure also it can be identified it basically it supports both the cloud as well as the on premises environments so if you look at the screen so we have the uh, three parts of the azure monitoring the services the left side uh, where you can see all the application operating system azure resources subscriptions and tenant these are the data sources whereas in the middle there are two boxes which depicts about the metrics as well as the logs uh, basically these are the data store where uh, when the data collected from the uh, data sources it can be stored either in the metrics format or it's in the logs format on the right side we can see various uh, things so it has the insights visualize analyze respond and integrate so we will be going to see each one so what is the insight and visualize analyze and respond and integrate as well okay so when you look at the azure uh, monitoring services so the data can be stored in two different formats either it can be metrics or in the logs formats so what is metrics so metrics can store the numerics values in the uh, date and time stamp basically it's a time based value so it we can use it for the time series database to get the, all the values and all the uh, data can be uh, analyzed by using the azure metric explorer and we can do in a near real time alerting system if there is any events of failures into the system the next one is the azure monitor logs data format so the logs is nothing but a kind of a text it can be structured or a semi structured data and it can be stored into a table and where the data source can or the kql queries can read the data and it can generate the visualizations or the projections for us so all the data stored into the uh, log analytics workflow in the uh, azure monitoring services and uh, so we can use the kql query to get the uh, data by using the azure data explorer and it is used to uh, mostly identify the root cause of the issues for example when an application is throwing an a 404 error or an a 500 internal server error then we can use the complete stack trace to identify from where which even this uh, issue can be started and where it was responded 
okay so the, uh, the next one is the data sources of the azure monitoring services there are different variety of data sources so that can be classified kind of an azure and the cloud services and other services so when you look at the azure tenant is it is nothing but the azure active directory which can be used as a data source to collect the data so when the user is logged in or any application used for the authentication purposes that can be logged into the system and it can be queried or how much in a positive audit logs or the failure audit logs as well and as your subscriptions as your resources those are the different variety of the um, data sources and even if you use in a virtual machines the guest operating system can be used as the one of the data source what kind of event is occurred in the uh, guest operating system that can be used for the log analytics when we develop in a custom application, so we use we can use the application insight to, to generate the log log metrics and that can be used as a data source. For the custom data source, also if you write in a web services that can be generate the um, events or as well as the logs that can be monitored. Even the other services like Azure Security Center, other Sentinel, Azure Sentinel also can be used as a data source for the log analytics. Okay, so we'll see about how the Azure tenant or the Azure Active Directory uh, can be used as a data source. So if you look at the left side, the blue color bar, where it uh, says the Azure Active Directory, that can be the logs can be stored into the log analytics database and the audit logs can be stored or, or can be viewed within the Azure portal itself. And all the data will be stored into the storage area. And if you want to send all the events to a different system, uh, with outside the Azure, then we can use the event hub that and these Active Directory events can be stored into the non-Azure destinations. For the next one is the Azure subscription as the data source. So in the Azure subscriptions, we have the service health as well as the activity log. All the activity logs can be stored like uh, in the logs as the log analytics, which can be used to uh, analyze the data. And the activity logs, again, it can be used to view the data within the Azure portal and it can use the storage and we can use the event hub to send the data into the outside the non-Azure destinations. Okay, so when we look at the next uh, uh, data sources, the uh, guest operating system, so within it's a kind of, you can say it's in a virtual machines. So in within the virtual machine, so we have three different types of uh, agents that can push the data into the uh, log analytics. One is the diagnostics extensions, where whatever happens is the diagnostics formats that can be sent into the logs as well as the metrics. And the log analytics agent also is there to generate all the logs that can be stored into the logs database. And the dependency agent, also generate the logs and that can be stored in the logs analytics uh, uh, area and we can use the log analytics to view the data if you look at the metrics metrics uses the uh, the diagnostic extension use the metrics that means it generates all the time based values so it will be stored on the metrics database and it uses the storage as well as the event hub Okay, so if, if we generate an, a custom application, for example, I develop in a web applications and I want to use the log analytics for, to perform all my analytics that can be used. So we have to install the instrumentation packages as well as the availability test and that can be stored into the uh, metrics database as well as the logs and we can use the metric explorer as well as the log analytics database to get the data. If you use the application insights, then we can combine all the data and we can see in a single place. If you are using the custom data source, so that's also can be possible. So we can use the instrumentation package, generate all the metrics, and we can use the metrics explorer to see the data. Or if we can use the applications, and it generates the all the application logs that can be stored into the log analytics database, and we can use the log analytics tool to, or the KQL to view the data. Okay, so let's see about, uh, so first we see what is the data source format, like logs as well as the metrics. Then we saw all the data source, different variety of data source. Now we'll see what are the different uh, ways that we can react once the event is occurred. That means once we collected the data, what we are going to do the next. So we can generate the insights. So it can be, uh, we can visualize the data. So nothing but the, we can see that all the insights, what happens uh, within the data. So we can see all the insights. So that can be three different categories of insights. One is the application insights, container insights, and the virtual machine insights. And uh, so we'll be seeing the application insights used to 
analyze the applications availability performance and usage of a web application so that's called an applications uh, insight and it can be used to monitor both the cloud as well as the on premises applications and it basically it identifies the issue before someone reports to the administrator so automatically we can identify the issue and we can generate any for example if the application is down then we can so display in a page called uh, uh, currently our application is down and we will be uh, re, um, fixing it soon something like that we can display the message proactively rather than someone reports say your application is down for one hour but there is no response from your end instead of that we can proactively identify the issue and we can fix it so when we generate the application inside so if you look at the um, web pages so it has installed the application inside instrumentations and if you can see all the web services also installed the ap application insights and the background services also has so all the events will be captured in the form of application insight and it will be uh, generating either alerts or the power bi uh, reports or it even it can be integrated directly with the visual studio or you can use the rest api or even you can export into an uh, excel or a different format then you can analyze it on a different applications or the tools as well. So this is one of the uh, application insights. So you can see on the left side, so it is uh, from the KQL query. So we got some of the outputs. There is an a, a exception occurred and when it was occurred and what is the URL, all the stakes, stress information got uh, stored. On the right side, you can see all the information that is um, viewed from the Visual Studio itself. So we can see which uh, controller has failed or thrown an exception. So it's throwing an exception called uh, system operation cancel exception. So no such operation. So something it is displaying from the controller called um, home controller from the method call, from the view called about. So this is the uh, application insights. We can use it in a different tools like on a KQL queries or even we can use within the Visual Studio itself. Okay, so the next one we are what we are going to see the container insight. So Azure supports the containerization. So we can even monitor all the container workloads, how much the Azure Kubernetes services are loaded, whether it needs the RAM or the CPU memory so that we can identify. So we can define in a particular RAM. Uh, threshold values like if the memory goes off the uh, particular machine goes on more than 8 GB then throw an exception or throw an uh, exception or something like that we can uh, throw it and uh, it can be alerted or even the administrator can be notified so there is an, uh, a resource outage or the resource shortage on a particular resource then they can act on it. So this is the uh, uh, visualization for the Azure Container Insights. So it says all the containerizations values and what is the 95th percentage of the uh, hours, what is the values and how much it is used, how many containers, what is the uptime values and everything. The next one is the virtual machines uh, insights. So uh, even the Azure monitoring services can be used to monitor the virtual machines uh, performance and even it analyzes for both the windows as well as the linux machines and even it supports the uh, even we can collect the data from the uh, on um, on premises as well as the azure systems as well so we have to use the uh, log agents to get the data from the uh, non uh, uh, that is the on premises uh, machines so this is the one of the insights that was generated uh, for the particular virtual machines so even we will be seeing all these in informations in the demo. And the next one is the, uh, so we got some of the insights from the uh, application or the virtual machines. Now we are wanted to see in a visualized format. So we can generate the um, metric analysis or, or sorry, the dashboards, views or Power BI or the workbooks to generate the visualizations. So if you look at the um, Azure dashboards, so this is the one of the Azure dashboards that is generated by using the KQL queries or even from the different metrics collection endpoints. So this is the one of the Azure dashboards. So, so we are going to develop a new dashboard and we will be uh, seeing in the upcoming slides. So the workbooks is nothing but uh, uh, it's very similar to the Azure dashboards, but it has the rich UI elements and the, it has a nice canvas where you can display a lot of different variety of charts and all. So that can be used for the workbooks. And even you can export the data into the uh, Power BI and uh, even uh, you can see the uh, generate the reports from the Power BI based on you uh, based on the uh, log metrics that we have collected. 
So, the, so we collected the data. We uh, insight. We got the insights. We visualized. Next one is we want to respond. So what happens is if there is a uh, resource failure or the resource is, is in high utilization. So what I have to do? So we have to uh, alert the uh, administrator. So there is a failure of the particular system or there is a bottleneck. So that can be used by using the alerts. Or even we can do an auto scaling. So if you created a virtual machine skill set, then we can. Uh, increase the uh, um, virtual machine scales or even e that means that we can um, we can add some of the resource to improve the performance so we'll see uh, so the uh, alerts proactively identifies the critical conditions and sends uh, uh, email or the sms to the uh, administrator uh, and we can create our own rules based on the some of the metrics then uh, the alerts will be sent so we, we, we will be seeing this also in the demo Okay, so this is one of the uh, alert that is uh, configured in the system. Okay, so this is the auto scaling option. So here we defined if the processor percentage goes more than 80 percentage, then increase the uh, two more virtual machines within the uh, virtual machine scale set. So that's what it is um, kind of on a grayed out. So the current capacity is three. So minimum you should use the two uh, system. And if the system usage is goes more than 80 percentage, then go to the fifth or uh, up to five so let's see into the demo now so let me pull up the screen okay so what i have done is i have created a very simple virtual machines and i from these virtual machines we are going to generate some of the uh, metrics and log informations and we, we are going to use the kql to see all the demo purposes so this is in a plain vanilla virtual machine it doesn't have installed anything except uh, ias okay so if you look at an, any virtual machines or most of the all the resources will having in a tab called monitoring so under the monitoring we have the insights alerts metrics logs and the workbook so these are the areas that we are going to cover up today first let's see what is the insights So this is one of the uh, insights that is generated uh, by the system itself. So it has, there are five different clients has been connected with this machine from the different IP. And this is the Windows machine. So, so that's what it has, the Windows logo. And you can see all the properties. So this machine has the uh, machine name and what is the operating system and what is the local IP address. That is the private IP address. And what is the virtual machine properties, some of the informations about this machine. And we can see, uh, let me hide this. So you can see what are the ports that has been opened from this machine. So there is the port 80, 53, and 123, 138, 137, and 443 are opened. And these are the machines is connected. Let me just expand. So these are the uh, applications that's configured with this 443 is connected. And so these are the one of the application insights. So if you want to generate new insights that can be generated, the next one is we'll be seeing alerts. So to configure the new alert, so I'm going to create new alert. So I'm going to create new alert rule. So it is asking which one you want to take. Okay, so I'll take all or even we can use the um, available memories so i can define uh, so currently this system is using our uh, from 2.5 gb to almost uh, 2 gb now so that is the current usage now i can configure some of the alert logic here so it can be dynamic or static so if the uh, average memory usage is greater than 2 gb i can configure the details here then i want to uh, evaluate this period how much period whether it is one minute 10 minutes whatever that we can define the range then i'm creating done so now you can see here whenever the available memory is greater than um, 
2 GB, then it sends a notifications. So I can define this notification. Okay, so we can see it here. So I'll close this. So the next one will be the actions. So once the uh, alert is triggered, so what I have to do it, the next one. So that is called the uh, action. So I can create an action. So let me just create an action group first. Just creating a to simplify it. So I can define whether I want to send an uh, email or SMS. So I can define here. Then I can define the email ID as someone at uh, example.com something. Or if you want to configure the email, so then at example.com. If you want to send an SMS, you can choose the SMS. Or if you want to use the mobile app notification, yes, that can be used. So I'm configuring. So next is the actions. So once the event is occurred and you notified the user, so what do you want to do the next? So you want to run any automated book or you want to uh, run any action, Azure functions or something that we can configure. So we are not going to configure anything now. So we are going to create it. the uh, Azure Action Group is getting created. So you want to categorize this uh, alert is what kind of an alert. It's a critical alert or warning or something so that we can define. And I can say that 2 GB memory So we can define, or if you want any descriptions, if nothing is required, then I can review and create and creating it. So the alerts rules are created. So we can go and see here. So this is the alert that we have created now. So we can see here. If the system goes as an average memory 2 GB, so then it sends the notification. So let, let's come back to the event. So this is the alert uh, rule that we have created. So this is the name we have given. So this is the, uh, we have categorized as the severity as the error. And if the status is enabled. And we have used the metrics as the data source, not the log analytics. Okay, now let's come to the um, metrics. So here is the place where you can define some of the uh, charts based on the metrics available on the particular virtu particular virtual machines. Currently here, the AKQL demo machines th that can be used. So what I'm going to do here is, so as I said earlier, the metrics uses the time as well as the uh, count. So it's a kind of a numerical values against in a particular time. So I'll just go and see the what is the right operations uh, happened on this machine. So you can see here, I have created this virtual machine somewhere in the morning. So there is no uh, rewrite re operations. So here you can see the... Uh, so you can see the average. So uh, from the 12 p.m. there is no read write operations but when I was installing the uh, IAS in the uh, evening so you can see there is a spike so that's what happened so here is the period where uh, the operating system might have installed the other services so that's the reason there is a spike here okay so if you want to change the metric to different so I'll just go and see the read operations per second so you can see here the read operations also happened. So here in the evening uh, before the demo, I was configuring the IAS. You can see there is a spike. So I can go and add this metrics. So I'll just add this metric and against with the right operations. So here also I'm choosing the average. So I'll go and add metrics. Now we can compare the read, read write operations on the virtual machine. So what, how, how much it is uh, affected. So if you want to add an, another metric, so I'll go and see the virtual machine. 
then i can see the available memories so you can see what is the, how much memory uh, on this machine is currently utilized so here you can see it is currently kind of you know, 2 gb is in utilizations and even i can add this also into the graph so you can see here so there is an a legend also defines the so blue color defines uh, about the read operations uh, red color defines the white uh, right operations whereas the indigo color uh, defines about the memory uh, things i can even go and remove the memory bytes okay and if you want to drill down to these logs so how what is the query that was generated for this then you can use the drill downs then you can choose the uh, active vm insights then you can see all the logs as well so this is the way it is used just a minute So what are the activities happened within this system? So that also can be viewed by using the drill down. So it's getting loaded. So you can see I was running some of the commands onto this machine by using the Azure console. So that's what it is saying. And I was executing the run command from the um, activity uh, from the Azure console. So that's what it was saying that as well. So all the activities ca is are captured. Okay, so let's go to the slide back. Let's see what's next. Okay, so the next one is the custom query language. So the custom query language is uh, it it is used to um, query the metrics and the logs analytics database, and it is doing in a read only operations. That means they. Once the data is collected, so it performs the all the operations on the collected data in a read-only mode. So it cannot do either update or delete. And this KQL is developed as part of the uh, ADE, the Azure Data Explorer. So the next one. So the KQL syntax is nothing but a kind of on a first we will be uh, using the table name. Then we will uh, use the pipe symbol to concoordinate the queries, then uh, basically it's, it, it does the filter or it's a kind of a concoordination. Then we'll do the uh, where clause. Uh, then we'll do the pipe symbol, another where clause. So the first where clause it executes, it filters the record. Then the result of the first where clause goes as the input for the second where clause. The, it's a, doing it's a kind of a funnel operations. Um, so if you have multiple where clauses uh, within the pipe symbol, then the data is filtered and the final data will be used for the aggregations or the for the projections. Okay, so this is one of the uh, data, uh, table called Hotbeat, so which will be stored all the activities happened on a particular virtual machines that will be stored. So when I, I execute as the Hotbeat, so it renders all the information from the system and it, it displays. Uh, just one more point on the table here. So here, it uh, the KQL is very similar to the uh, SQL, but it is not exactly, but it's a kind of a uh, SQL uh, query. Where in the SQL, we will do a select star from table name, then we will do the uh, where clauses, then we will do a group by, uh, then uh, that's what we do here. Here, it's a kind of a reverse, where first we'll say, this is the table, apply my where clause, do all the filtrations, then do the aggregations or the projection, then it it's, displays their results or even i can say it's very similar to the uh, link queries so even the link queries also we will do in a kind of on a first we will do the from which collection that we want to query or which table that we want to query then we will apply the where clause then we will do the order by or group by then we will do the uh, all the selections or the uh, projections okay so here, the table I have used is the hotbit. The hotbit table uh, will read all the data and displays when there, when there is no uh, where clause uh, has been uh, uh, added. And so this is the another uh, query. So where what I was done is, so uh, I have applied some of the where clause for an, uh, two different machines and I have generated a graph instead of a uh, uh, table formats in the in this example if you look at all the data are store are displayed as in a table uh, tabular format whereas uh, the second example all the table uh, data can be displayed as a chart format so here i have used the bar chart 
okay so there is an another option so here if you look at the query so i am getting the data from the hotbit table then i am filtering the voice type equals to windows then i am forcing some of the um where clause by for this uh basically for summarizing it and i'm doing in a sort by the computer name and i'm rendering the results as a table so you can see all the data is rendered as a table here okay so this is the uh another query which is used to identify the um virtual machines availability so how much the time the virtual machine was in up if there is any uh, uh failure on the hotbit is failure of the services or got failure then it returns as a false so here you can see i can write an uh, query as well or the if clauses as well uh, so here if hotbit count is greater than zero then return that means the um, machine is uh, alive or it is dead so that is the uh, clauses also that we can include it so this the uh, data is written as the chart for the same query. So let's see into the demo now. So let me pull up the browser. Okay, so this is the same query that I have been used for the, from the PPT. So let's go one by one. So first, <coughs> first we'll go and write in a very simple query. So I'm going to write the hot bit as the The KQL uh, query is the uh, um, case sensitive. So if you put a, a smaller different cases, then you will you will not get the results. So it is executing and it returns all the results. So you can see all, what are the columns it is available here. So that that is available here and you can see uh, what are the columns headings here and even if you want to apply the filters here so even you can uh, apply the filters over here as well so you can see different columns okay so the computer environment is on the azure it is not on the on premises but if you have the on premises then it will be displayed as a non azure okay so the next query what i'm going to do is so i have added some of the uh, criteria as well as I am defining here if the hotbit count is greater than uh, zero then uh, return the status as true otherwise returns as a status as false so here also the results are coming here so I'll just go and execute it okay so here you can see the status is alive uh, the system is uh, it's alive there are all the services are running uh, so that's what we are getting the status alive. If the services or the hotbit is failure, then it will be displayed as a false here. Okay. If you want to see the results as the chart, then you can click the chart. Then you can do what kind of charts that you want to display here. You can do so. We have option for the chart formatting. So here, if you want to change different formats, so the stacked, unstacked. So it's. If you want to use the line chart so you can even use the line chart but we need to see when you are changing the uh, chart type then you obviously you have to use the different data points so that otherwise you may not get the proper results as well okay so the next one so if you want to write uh, any queries so then you can come here you can click the logs i'll just reopen all the logs okay no problem I'll click the logs. So it gives some of the uh, templates to start with the queries. So you can see the chart with the CPU trends. You can click any one of the queries. Then it generates the data as a uh, query based on the uh, table. So here it uses the performance as the table. So I have not configured the performance counter. So that's the reason it is not getting it. So let's go and take uh, different queries or if you want to use any one of the existing templates so there are a lot of examples available here so even you can get it from here so i'll go and delete it so let's see mm. so it it will be we may not get the results because i have only one virtual machine which is running so we'll see the different examples windows fail logins okay. 
let's see if there is any updates are missing okay so let's go back to our heartbeat table so we'll get the data from the heartbeat table even we can use the uh, let uh, to store some of the variable values and that can be used within the query so i'm using one of the example So there is no spike so everything is works fine so that's what it says no spike if there is any uh, spike then it will have some data so there is any errors let's see if there is any errors are reported If not, if you're not getting any data, then we'll go back to our uh, heartbeat table. Let's do it. So the query is getting executed. Okay, so we can define what are the columns that we want to display here. So then uh, it can be displayed here. Or if you want to do any group by based on some of the columns, yes, we can do in a group by. And you want to display the times in a UTC or your local time zones that can be also uh, added here. So here you can see I have uh, created this virtual machine just in the afternoon. So that's what it is displaying here. Okay, so now we'll go back to the slide. We'll see what next. okay the next one is the azure dashboard so first initially we have seen what is the azure monitor and the different data sources for the uh, azure monitors what is the uh, data types that can be stored in the azure monitor that is the logs and the metrics and we have uh, saw some of the different way of uh, looking the uh, data like uh, visualizations insights alerting uh, responding everything and we have seen how we can uh, write a very simple uh, kql queries and the next one is the how to create the dashboards uh, azure dashboards and how we can link the azure dashboards with the kql uh, outputs that's what we are going to see in the azure there are two different types of uh, dashboards there are private dashboards that means it is uh, visible only to you and the next one is the shared dashboards that can be shared within the uh, person that you have permitted so that's called the shared dashboard so we'll see uh, this is one of the uh, shared dashboards so um, where we can see the different data here we can see in a bar chart for in a particular demo machine so here you can see some of the analytical uh, data for the uh, another machines so the more than uh, multiple data sources can, or the data can be displayed within the uh, dashboards as well and this is the private dashboards there is no difference between uh, the here the options are only difference is the private dashboards is available only to you whereas the shared dashboards are available for the users who are having the permissions so now let's go and see the uh, dashboards, how to create the uh, dashboards. So let me pull up the uh, browser. Okay, so let's go here. I'm going to click the Azure homepage and um, all services. So we have an option called dashboards. We can see here the dashboards options are available so uh, i can uh, create a new dashboards just a minute so i can click uh, the um, hamburger icon i can click the uh, dashboard then this is the one of the dashboard that i have created recently okay so i can browse all the uh, dashboards from here so it has the only one private dashboards it has the different uh, uh, shared dashboards so that's what it is displaying here so if you want to create a new dashboard you can use this uh, new dashboard icon or uh, you, i can click the blank dashboard then it, you can get a lot of tiles then you can include uh, the informations here and you can uh, see there is an option so this is a blank canvas where you can edit or configure the uh, the metrics or i can 
bring all the resources. That's the easiest one to display. So it will bring all the uh, resources that have been used. It, it has the default configuration to bring all the other resources. That's what it is uh, displayed here. If you want to expand or minimize that, you can do it here. If you want to do any configurations, then you can use this options to get whether you want to what kind of size that you want to use and if you're done with the customizations you can click so then it will be available here you can save the dashboards if you want to share this so currently it says it's in a private dashboard if you want to share it with someone then you can share it here so let's go and see edit the metrics chart so you can select the scope let it load so i'm going to use the uh, azure virtual machine as one of my uh, resource group so i'll select um, the log analytics workspace as my data source so i'm going to select basically i'm configuring the data source for this matrix so i'm going to i'm using the log analytics so i'm going to select the available memory and Let's go and take something else. It doesn't have any spikes, so We'll see, we'll select different metrics or scope rather than using the log analytics here. So here, let's go and see the memory usage. So we got it. So we can add the metrics. And let me go and choose the read and write so that we have already configured in the application in the metrics area. So I'm going to add this metric as well. And I'm going to do the next one. The write operations average add metrics so this is the operation that we have already done on the um, other place during our earlier uh, demo so now i can refresh okay so i have done the editing so now it should be appearing here come on it is not saved let's see Let's go with a single one. Add metrics. It doesn't have any save options. Okay, so here it is. Sorry save to dashboard. So I have to click the save to dashboard. Now you can see all the uh, memory consumption it displays here so if i want to add one more tile then i can click edit then i can add one more matrix chart here i can go and configure it let me close this pan let's now we'll configure the read and write for the same virtual machine We'll choose this virtual machines apply so we'll do the read operations per second and the next one is
rate operations per second as the average add to metric save to dashboard now you can see the read and write operations displays in my dashboards so i am saving the dashboards as well so now whenever i go the dashboard so i can see all the dashboards here from let's go to the home okay let's click the dashboard again so now i can see all the data is loaded if i want to go to the different dashboard then i can go to the different dashboard you can see the shared icon here so this kql demo is the shared dashboard so that's what it is having in a different icons the shared indicator is available here okay so now we have created the dashboards directly and we have added some of the metrics that's fine but uh, if i want to edit the kql query so what i have to do is so if you look at here so we have the log analytics uh, um, informations on click off it it will go to the log analytics or i can write the kql query directly then i then i can bring the results into the dashboards as well so first i'll go to the virtual machines i'll close this i'll go to the home i'll go to the virtual machine i'll go to the monitoring area i'll click the logs let me write in a very simple kql query like the heartbeat count so i'll just track the um available memory okay Okay, it says no results found. Let's go to the logs again. Okay, so now let's take this. So we got some of the data from the heartbeat. So bringing this uh, output uh, into the uh, Azure dashboard is very simple. So we have all these informations that can be displayed as a chart or in the here. Then here we have an option. So um, save the results into the uh, dashboard. So just a minute. Why this is. So if you want to save this query, so I can even save this query. Okay, so it's got saved query. So once we got the results, so we can share the results into the Azure dashboard. So when you click, so it will be asking whether you want to the private uh, dashboard or the shared one for the existing one, or if you want to create a new one. So equal demo one, two, three, then I can create and pin. So all these outputs of these results will be pinned into the Azure dashboard. So I'll go to the dashboard and just duplicate this tab. So, okay, so I'll go here. I'll click the dashboards. So we can see the KQL demo one, two, three. So it will have the same data. So we can see all the data. If I want to uh, edit this um, analyzing, then what I can do is I can click this uh, log analytics. So it opens the uh, date or the query into the logs analytics. So where we can write the query and we can update the results back. So it's, it will load the query. Yeah, the same query that we have used it. So that's why it displays here. So I'm just changing the data format. Then I want to pin to the Azure dashboard. So now you can see the same thing can be pinned over here as well. Okay. So if you want to share this data, uh, um, dashboard so we can do that as well so you can use the share icon so that can be used so then we can use this so publish options now this dashboard will be shared okay so it's getting refresh
so all these subscription persons can have the access so now you can see this i we got the shared icon so we got uh we have created the private dashboard and we made this private dashboard as a shared dashboard as well so if you want to stop the um sharing options then you can use the unsharing or if you want to give uh, permissions to specific persons then you can use the access control options to give the permissions so whether they want to um, view or edit that kind of permissions that you can allow so let's go back to the ppt again okay so these are the things that i want to cover up today so are the initial that we have seen the uh, what is the azure monitoring services what is the different data source how to use the uh, data sources then we have seen what is the kql and uh, we have written very simple kql query then we have seen what is the azure dashboards like private and shared dashboards then we have created the azure uh, kql query then we have displayed the data into the private dashboard then we made the um we made the private dashboard into the shared dashboards so that's all uh, i want to cover up today so if there is any questions please post into the uh, youtube channel or uh, so the, then i will check and i will reply back to you so thanks for joining and thanks for the opportunity from the Azure developer community and the reskill So I hope guys, you all must have learned from this session. And if you have any kind of queries, you can just directly ask to the mentor. And if not right now, you can connect with the mentor on LinkedIn as well. And he'll be more than happy to help you with the doubt session as well. And you can join our Discord server as well for any community support. I'm sharing you the Discord link of our channel so you guys can just join the Discord of Azure Developer Community and you can get to know about uh, the upcoming events from our community side. And thank you very much, sir, for coming here, taking out your time and delivering such a nice lecture. Thank I you. hope there are no more doubts from the community in the live chat. So yeah, you people can connect uh, with sir on LinkedIn. He's pretty active on LinkedIn as well. So you can ask if there is any other doubts. And once again, thank you, sir, for coming here and sharing your precious knowledge with all the attendees. And thank you, everyone, for being such a lovely audience. Till then, goodbye. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.